Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to the Joy Learning Channel on the Junior High School Revision. It is always a pleasure coming your way. It's also very exciting when I see that you have tuned in and you are ready to watch on the Joy Learning Channel. It's exciting to meet you again. My name is Samuel Okwabi. You can call me Sam Mox. And today is yet another time to revise um, another important topic for our BEC examinations. So for today, I want us to go through the all-important statistics and probability questions. We shall be doing some questionings. We shall be doing some BEC questions. And so as we go on, I urge you to always call in if you have any question so that we can address those questions for you. I also want to urge you to subscribe to our social media handles on Facebook, YouTube, on the Joy Learning channel or Joy Learning TV, I beg your pardon. And then let's get interactive, okay, so that we can learn from each other. Once again, you are welcome. Let's start today's lesson for statistics and probability. So, at the end of this lesson, I expect that you, my students, you will be able to construct frequency table for a given data. And then number two, I expect that you should be able to read and interpret frequency tables and charts. I also expect that the lessons or the knowledge you will gain will help you enough to draw a bar chart to represent a data. And as you draw a bar chart, you will also will be able to draw a pie chart. We know the difference between a bar chart and a pie chart, right? As we get along, we shall be looking into these things and going into them into details. Then we will be able to solve some problems in relation to probability, so that at least we can combine statistics and probability in one. So when we say statistics, if you can remember in our lessons, we have said that Sometimes there is a need for us to collect data, and when we collect data, we can organize the data, we can summarize the data, we can present the data, we can analyze the data. The process of going through all these collections, organizations, and summarizing, presenting, and analyzing data is a concept of statistics. And the concept is very important to humanity because everything around us in the world has to do with data. And when we receive the data, we should be able to handle the data so that it becomes meaningful for us and for whatever purpose we are collecting the data. So this is a concept we discussed or we learned in school about statistics. And some of the data can come from many sources. For instance, you can have data collected collected from maybe monthly rainfalls or maybe traffic censuses, all right? Or we can have population censuses or examination results. All these are sources where we can get our data from. And so when we receive data from all or any of these sources, then we are able to organize it, summarize it, present it, analyze it, then it means we are practicing statistics. So straight ahead we want to enter into some concepts some workings okay so that we look at how we can interpret frequency table so i have this sample question presented on your screens okay let's read it together the question says that the table below is the results of a survey conducted in the school to find the preferred radio channel of each student in the class so it can be your school so we came to your school and we came to your class and we conducted a survey from your students okay we want to find out which radio channel they prefer the more so the table that we see on the screens is the results that we saw from that survey so for asempa fm we saw from the survey that eight students said they preferred Asempa FM. Adom FM, 11 students. Joy FM, 12 students. Hits FM, 9. And then others, other radio channels 
we had five people who said that they prefer that student. So we want to see how we'll be able to use this data that we have seen to analyze the data, to interpret it, and to make meaningful understanding from that. So our first question is saying, how many students are in the class? Then the second question says, what is the modal channel? And the third one says, what percentage of students prefer the Adom FM channel? All right, so the data that we have been given, we are going to use the data to answer the questions. The first question was asking that how many students were in the class? If you remember, if you want to find the number of students that were in the class, then we've got to add all the responses or the preferences that each child in the class gave us. We saw that there were people who said that they wanted a sempa. Some of them said they wanted a dome. All right. Some of them also said they want joy FM. And some were also of another one. Hit FM. Others were going for others. Okay, so let's add it up and see. It is important that you get your concepts right. Okay, so that you will not get off something. Yes, please. I missed my pen. So at this point, we want to go for a quick break. We'll get back to you very soon. We'll be back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are so much sorry for that technical hitch out there, but thank God is that it has been resolved. That means we can move on with our lesson. So we're indicating that there has been a data that has been given to us, requesting us to analyze the data in a certain way. So we went to a class, and then we asked the student the radio station that they preferred the most, and so the data or the table we see on our screens is what the information we received or the data we received from that survey. And so we were asked to find how many students are in the class. So I was indicating that if we are going to find how many students are in the class, then there is a need for us to sum up all the responses by way of the preferences that each of the students gave us for all the options that were available, okay? And so we can see that we realized that there were people who said they wanted a sempa, and there were eight, okay? We had people who said they preferred a Dom FM, there were 11. We had those who wanted Joy FM, there were 12. We have those who went for Hit, and there were nine, and those that went for others, and there were five. And so given this, if we want to find the total number of students that were in the class, then we need to sum up all the number of people who preferred these various radio channels, okay? But please remember that you will have to show the working that you are going to go through in order to arrive at your answer. So that, for instance, we can say that the total number in the class as has been given, okay, should give us those who said they preferred a sempa, they were eight, plus those who preferred a dome, plus those who wanted joy, plus those who wanted hits FM, plus those who said they are going for the other channels. Okay, so you need to show your working this way so that we can mark your methodology for you as being right. And so when that is done, then we add up. So 8 plus 11 gives us 19, okay? 
19 plus 12 will give us 31. Is that so? Then 31 plus 9 will give us 40. So that 40 plus 5 gives us 45. So at the end of the day, we will end up getting 45 students or pupils in the class. Remember, there was nobody in the class who did not make preference to any of the channels. Meaning that all of them said they liked something. So after adding all their preferences, that should give us the total number of people in the class. Right? Great. Then the part two, or B, said we should find the model channel. The model channel. Okay? We remember that when we talk about the model channel, we are referring to the channel that had the most number of preferences. We remember we said mode is the, the, the data that corresponds to the highest frequency. In other words, the highest occurring item in the observation that we are dealing with. So when we go through the data that we received, Asempa were 8, Adom were 9, Joy were 12 students, Hits FM, 9 students wanted it, and then the others, they are nine. We can see or we can deduce that there were more people who were preferring Joy FM over Ada or over the rest of the radio channels. Meaning that we can say that our, our model channel, okay, will give us Joy. Meaning there were more people who said they wanted Joy FM. And how many were they? They were 12. More than any other channel in which the numbers were a little lower. All right. So that was that. Then the next question says, we should find the percentage of students who said they prefer Adom FM. The percentage of students who said they prefer Adom FM. And so from the data, we realized that the number of people who said they prefer Adom FM were 12 out of the 45. So if you want to express that number as a percentage, we know how to express numbers as a percentage, okay? So the number in question or the number we have found out of the total number in the data set that we are dealing with, and we express it as a percentage. And so, let's say percentage of students who said they like or they prefer Adom FM. We can see that from the data, the number who said they like Adom FM, there were how many? Let's cross check it. Adom FM were 11. Okay, so then we can get 11 out of the total, which was 45, and we express this as a percentage. Quite easy to go about that, right? Then we simplify 11 on 45 times 100%. So let's see how we can go about that. Any common factor? Okay, so we can see that for 145, we can have a common factor of 5. So let's start with that. So 5 goes into 45, 9, isn't it? And 5 goes into 120. So now we are left with 9 over, sorry, 11 over 9 multiplying 20%. Then from here, we can determine whether we have another common factor out of here. Judging from what we see, we may not have any other common factor. That means we have to simplify by multiplying our numerators that is left, which is 11 by 20%. We divide that answer by 9. Okay. So when that is done, then we know that 11 times 20, 11 times 20, if you can't do that quickly, you can easily multiply 11 by 2. You can easily get the answer for 11 by 2 done 11 by 20. Okay, so we can do 11 by 2, that will give us 22. But knowing that it wasn't 2, but rather 20, we add a 0 to it. Meaning that 11 by 20 should give us 200 and 20 and this has to be divided by 9 all right so when that is done we can go ahead and simplify using 
our long division method. All right. So 9 goes into 22. How many times can we have? We can have it twice. Okay. 9 goes into 22 twice. 9, 2 gives us 18. Okay. And then we subtract 18 from 22. When we do so, we are going to get 4. I'm sure you know the process, how this thing goes and how they work. All right. So a remainder of 4, we pull down the 0 there so that we are left with a 40. So that 9 goes into 40. How many times we can have 4? 9, 4 is 36. There will be a difference of 4. Okay. So since the zeros are done, we can bring a zero and introduce a decimal point. Okay. Remember to be working as fast as possible so that you don't miss out on time. Okay, so 9 again goes into 40, another 4, 9, 4 is 36. It appears that we are going to have a recurring decimal. Okay, so a difference of 4, it will go there, another 4, another 36. Meaning that we can indicate that this 4 is going to repeat itself from what is going on. So we can say 220 divided by 9 should be giving us 24.8. 4-4, four, four. and the 4-4 four, four is recurring, okay? And it is in percentage, so remember to bring your percentage. Simple as that. Not too difficult to handle, all right? So please, I'm sure you should be handling this on your own. Or any other question that comes, this should not pose any issue to you. In any case, if you have any issue with any of these things, when there is a call-in segment, remember to call in and bring your question. We shall address them for you.